Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, my name is Ryan and I work at the ITRC alongside my wonderful colleagues, Lori and Mark, both of whom will be telling you about Panopto today. So this is our students watching my videos using Panopto Analytics. And just for an overview of what we'll be talking about, first we'll talk about how to access Panopto Viewer Analytics. We will talk about what user statistics are available, why these analytics are useful, and we'll also have a question and answer session at the end. But feel free to go ahead and pop questions into the chat throughout the whole time as well. And next up, Lori is going to tell us more. So just an intro, Panopto is our new video management system that integrates with both Moodle and Canvas. And we're recommending that faculty start using this in order to free up room on your Google Drive. But the main reason is you can access these analytics. It's not the main reason. There's other reasons. Another good reason is that it has automatic captioning. So we can be more active about providing accessible content. But the analytics are what I really love about it. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about today. I'll just show you real quick how you add a video and then how you get to the analytics. So to add Panopto in, it's called Panopto LTI. I don't know what LTI stands for, <laughs> but we kind of think of it as an app that's external from Moodle that we're adding in. So if you click on add an activity or resource, you're gonna click on Panopto LTI. And next you're going to select content. And the first thing it does is ask you if you're going to grade this video. So you can add quizzes, interactive quizzes and things within the video, and it will actually add the grade to the grade book. You can do it based on their the quiz results or the percentage that they viewed. So if they watch the whole thing, they get five points or something. But I'm going to say, do not grade this video and continue. This is a video I had uploaded previously, but I'm going to click upload and grab one from my computer. And I'll just choose a random one that is in the list first. And it loads up pretty, at least this part of it loads up pretty quickly. And then you can just do insert and you can see it'll take it a little while to process. So it won't be immediately available to us to view, but it'll just be working in the background. I haven't actually timed it. It seems like it takes like 30 to 60 minutes for them to process. So if you were doing this right before class, you would want to give yourself some time for the lecture to process. So I'm going to click insert and it brings in just the name of your file. And at this point, if you wanted to change it, you could. I'm going to take out new. And you can do your activity completion, all of your normal settings that you would do with any other Moodle activity. And I'm going to click Save and Return to Course. And so here's the one that I just loaded. And if I click on it, it's going to tell me it will be ready shortly. But I'm going to show you one that um, I've already uploaded previously. So I'm going to click on it. And the way you get to your analytics is by clicking on this arrow at the bottom of the viewing window that's kind of pointing up to the right. So you click on that and then you are taken into the analytics, into the video itself. And Hi, then, I'm Emily Jordan and today I will be showing. Hi, Emily. <laughs> um, and then up, I don't know if you can see it or if the Zoom window is covering it, but in the upper right corner, there's a little symbol, it looks like graphs and you click on that and then that will open up your statistics. So we're going to switch back to the slides and I have some screenshots that I think will be easier to see for this next part. So this is when you open up your analytics, this is what you're going to see at first. It's the session dashboard. And we're just going to click through. I'll explain each one of these a little in a little bit of brief detail. So the first one you see is the number of views and downloads. So that's in total. But the next one over is unique viewers. So the 29 means that there's a couple of students that have 
either download it or watch the video multiple times. So 29 total views, but 19 unique people. And then the next box over is the total number of minutes, minutes the video was viewed. So I'm not sure why this is relevant right now, but 335 minutes of this video in total have been viewed by students. And then the next box over is the actual length of your video. So this video in this example is 17.6 minutes. And then the last one is the average of how much the video was played in its entirety. And so a lot of the students were just starting it and only watching like three minutes, five minutes, but most of them were going about to minute 15. And so it averaged that out. And so I think this is useful if they're not watching the whole thing, your video might be too long. So it might help you to kind of evaluate, you know, how your videos are doing and your students interaction with them. So the next uh, box you'll see when you look at your analytics is the views and downloads by day. I love this one because it lets you see Throughout the the week, it's right now it's doing the last 30 days, I think. Yeah, 30 days. So it's tracking starting in September 14th. They started watching this video. But leading up until the 8th and the 10th, it really ramped up. A lot of students started watching it. And I tried to look in the course to see if there was a correlation, like if there was an exam coming up right after that or something. That's how I would utilize this. I couldn't really uh, determine that in the course I was using as the example because they don't have set due dates on things. So I think it was just the students maybe were starting to work in the program that she was talking about in the video. So that's my guess on that. But I think it's pretty interesting to see how many people are are viewing it each day and you know where this where it spiked in the viewing. And the next one is viewer engagement. I don't find this one to be quite as helpful. I'm sure that there are uses for it, but it shows you at what points students skipped ahead or went backwards. I don't know if you are aware of this in YouTube. If you got a video up that someone created, if you hover on the timeline, you'll see these bumps. Well, I always thought that was the audio, <laughs> but my husband explained to me, no, that's the part where people have forwarded to a lot. So it's the most popular segment of the video. Did you guys know that? <laughs> so that's what that means. And because he does that all the time when he's watching mechanic videos or something, he fast forwards to that point. Um, so that's what this is showing. So it might be relevant to some people. They went to minute 15 a lot. So that's what that is for. And then this next part, I also really like top viewer statistics. So I have it grayed out on the left-hand side, but it actually lists the name of the students who viewed the video. And so that first student has actually viewed or downloaded it four times. And they have watched 100% of the video during those four times. The average that they watched though was seven minutes, 7.2 minutes. So what my guess is that this, so this was a video on using AutoCAD. My guess is that the student watched it, went into AutoCAD, went back to the video to a certain step. So that's what I'm thinking was happening with this student. Um, but it lists them in order of the most views or the most minutes delivered, that type of thing. You no longer have to guess which students have watched your videos and how long they've been watching, um, this will be available to you. I, th I think this is going to be a great tool for faculty. Well, let's look at the next one. The user dashboard is users are the students or the people who are viewing your videos. You are called the creator because you're creating those videos. The students are the users. And so I clicked on that top student. I clicked on their profile and it took me to their user dashboard. And apparently this student is not only in drawing with CAD, but also in Math 1153. And I can see that she's been also watching videos from that course. Um, but the thing I like about it is I can see 
that she's watched parts one of three. She's watched chapter four, chapter three. So I can see from my course what videos she's been watching. And if she skipped one, maybe she didn't watch the one for chapter one. I would probably want to know why. Maybe it was too long, whatever reason. But you can also see what your students, individual students have been watching and interacting with. Okay. And then this is your folder. So what we were looking at was on a video, a specific video. Now I went to the folder that contains all the videos for a course. And so I'm getting folder analytics now. And the top video that the students are watching is part one of three. And there's 20 unique viewers. There's 21 students in the class. So I know that one of my students is not watching that video. And I could go back to that video and I guess by process of elimination, determine who didn't watch it <laughs> and reach out to them. You know, why didn't you watch the video? You know, I see that you're struggling. You should probably watch the video, those types of things. But as I was saying, I can see she may not have watched the chapter one or chapter two video because they're not listed here, or maybe she's going out of order. I'm not sure, um, but I can see that part two of three, only 10 people watched it, and part three of three, only eight people watched it. So the viewing has dropped down on this three-part video. This was a video that was on YouTube originally. The person had kind of an accent, so maybe the students didn't find it as useful and they didn't want to go back to that again. Who knows? We can guess a million things, you know, but this is for your whole folder. So all of your videos in your folder, you can get that snapshot of what students have been looking at. So we're on to some frequently asked questions that I thought might come up. What is the benefit of embedding videos into my course using the Panopto LTI? And that's as opposed to hosting them on Google Drive and just linking them from Google Drive or linking them from your YouTube channel if you have one. Um, the benefit, as I've said, is that you can see who's been watching it. And um, you can just share a link to the video to anyone, but if it's not in your course, it's considered anonymous. So you wouldn't know who is viewing that. So that's why we want to use the Panopto LTI every time to add those videos in. If I import my course content into Moodle next semester, Will the Panopto LTI link still work? Yes. And you will not have to add the videos again. However, the statistics do not reset, but on that dashboard, you can filter. So I could filter by the last 30 days and see the most recent views. You can do a custom range. So you can look and see from this date to this date, how many views there were. So. You won't have to redo your videos. When we go to Canvas, you will have to do a few extra steps to bring these videos over into your Canvas course. And so we're not gonna cover that right now, but when the time comes, we will have instructions on how you can reuse those in your Canvas courses. Okay. Well, if you would like to learn more about Panopto, Canvas, Moodle, or any other of the edu educational technology that's supported at ISU, here are a number of ways that you can do so. We have our Tiger Tracks articles, which are just in time at your fingers to do how to guides. We also have our Wednesday webinar video library. So this video after today will be will be placed, will be edited and placed up on that video library. We also have our Wednesday webinar schedule, and you can simply access those by scanning the QR code here, or you can go to the ITRC website. We also have a link to that there. If you'd like to meet with the ITRC, you can email us, give us a call, or visit us in the lower level of the ISU library. And we also take on demand appointments. If you'd like to meet with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, either by Zoom, phone, or in person. And then finally, for future Wednesday webinars, watch the Idaho State Today for an article on uh, future webinars. And you can also check the ISU Canvas Transition website, which is your one-stop shop for everything related to the Canvas transition. So I'd like to thank you so much for joining us today. 
and we hope you have a great day.